Okay, it is 7 o'clock. Welcome to AFJ's Instagram um, review. So, uh, a couple days ago, um, AFJ's Chief Operating Officer, MJ Ortiz, uh, scored for me one Star Trek Migo Gorn, who we have right here in front of us. So, um, as you can see, um, it is a it is slightly different than the Gorn that we had um, way back in the day. I probably even shouldn't say we had because when I was a kid, um, Migo was on the way out. Um, Kenner had taken over, and if you watch the toys that made us, you can get a lot more information about Migo's fall, not securing the Star Wars deal. Um, you know it, that that was one of their you know things. That was one of their downfalls. Um, now, um, as you can see here on the package, um, I'll try to. This is um, 2,429 of 10,000. Um, that could be why finding the Gorn is hard. Um, he's been a bit tough. Uh, lately, uh, we've been trying to find the Gorn as well as Frankenstein and Dracula. It, it doesn't seem as if Migo is overproducing, which is good. Um, however... I can see that uh, there is maybe some angst amongst the fans that really want these figures, but nothing says that Migo can't produce a second wave of uh, the first wave. Um, you know, so there is a good chance that uh, the Gorn here um, will be out there. I mean, I'm definitely sure if you go to a Star Trek convention, um, you will find one. Now, uh, before we really get into them here, um, Marty Abrams uh, presented the Migo. Uh, he is an officially licensed figure. He has 14 points of articulation. Uh, 14 points is pretty impressive, actually. Um, I'm not sure if all Migos have that. Um, however, this Migo is slightly different as in he is not completely cl uh, clothed like a lot of the other Migo figures are, um, which is a vast contrast to the original Migo Gorn figure, which was one of the few aliens uh, that actually got into the wave. Now... Um, he was teased early here uh, on the package. Um, if you saw Sulu, um, you did see that they had the Romulan commander uh, played here by Mark Leonard. Um, I believe I got that name right. Who eventually would go on to play Spock's father. And then we'd, we'd have the Gorn. So we didn't know at the time when Sulu was released if these figures were going to be um, just teased or they were just doing some wishful thinking on the package. However, we did think that maybe there's a slim chance that the Gorn's going to get a figure. Uh, what's up, Engage and Destroy? How's it going? Now, uh, before we get into it, let's flip them over here. A nice little thing here on the back. Oh my. <laughs> We've got Sulu. Mark Leonard is the Romulan commander. I always liked him on Battle... I'm sorry, not Battlestar Galactica. He was on an episode of Buck Rogers once with Jill Gerard, where he actually was this weird alien that could take his head off. Um, very freaky. Um, good episode, though. And uh, then, we, of course, we have the Gorn. Now, it is not known to too many people, um, or maybe it is to most Trekkies, that the Gorn is actually played by three different... People. Now, the voice of the Gorn is Ted Cassidy, and Ted Cassidy is best known as Lurch on the original Adams Family. Um, he was uncredited at the time, but it's come out now that he was the voice of the Gorn. So he said, I grew weary of the chase. Wait for me, human. Well, I really should put a glass of water here <laughs> next to me to do that. I now the uh, the Gorn was played by Gary Combs and was played by Bobby Clark and Bill Blackburn. So if you watch the episode of Star Trek called Arena, which was in the first season, it is the 18th episode of the series, um, you got to wonder how long they were out there in the desert filming these scenes. Um, I couldn't have three different actors play this act to play this character as well as uh, do the voice. Uh, so that's actually four. So, you know, it's kind of like Darth Vader in a lot of ways that he've had lots of people play him um, and here all at the same time. So let's open this bad boy. Now I'm going to pop up uh, Mandy Faces here. Uh, who I just picked up at RetroCon as a uh, as a little stand-in. 
please bear with me. I'm going to uh, do something that's very difficult, and I wish I could show this. Um, I'm going to open the pack. Um, this is this is really tough for me, and uh, but a moment's courage is all it takes. As I said, um, he is out. As I said, this was the uh, 2,429th Gorn, and out of a uh, out of 10,000, so he's been a little hard to get. He is out of the pack, and. Well, it was really easy. If uh, you tuned in for my uh, <laughs> my Diamond Select uh, Frankenstein, I think it took me at least five minutes to get him out of the pack. So, does he have that uh, that new toy smell? Not really. Oh, wait a minute. Actually, he kind of smells like uh, hand sanitizer. So, uh, yeah, the Gorn smells like hand sanitizer. I figured that one out. Now, um, wow, he is. I'm going to get rid of the packaging here. And in case you're wondering what my backdrop here is, it's uh, the back of the Mondo Thing game. Um, but it's the only thing that I had that was very deserty looking. Um, so here we have the Gorn. I try to go for an instant pose right away to see see how well he's going to hold up. Um, and as far as instant poses go, boom, he is done. I'm going to even move the camera down here a little bit. You can see he is completely standing on his own. So here we have, um, wow, this Mego Gorn is fantastic. Now, looks as if his arms aren't too, too mobile. They're not going to bend. They're not going to come straight out like this. So they're kind of a, a little bit of a sway, but not much. Um, the feet, though, how on the, how on the, on the other hand, um, you can do a split. Um, can he stand on one leg? Nope. But he's got 14 points of articulation, and it's a solid figure. Now, um, as far as accessories go, I do note that he does not come with the spike. That was his weapon of choice when he was in uh, the arena uh, fighting Kirk, where Kirk was trying to make uh, gunpowder and shoot diamonds at him and everything. Um, and he does not come with the Traversinial translator which is a little weird so he does not come with the translator which also is very kind of uh, similar to the spike or you could say that this here is the translate is the translator but uh, all trekkie trekkies are going to know that that's nothing more than uh, than a uh, communicator so I'm gonna see if we can move in here on the face this is a fantastic sculpt for the face so this is just awesome um I mean, we've got full details here on the back of the head. We've got a nice little belt here that's actually sewn into the costume. We can unvelcro this. And actually, I hadn't noticed this before on some of the 14 inches, but we actually have the Mego stamp here on the back with a copyright and a date. So that's really neat. I like that. It's almost like a tattoo on the back of the, of the guy. Uh, Jam Collectibles, uh, thanks for the request, but I don't do um, – I don't share – uh, the reviews because I can't uh, I, I I can't see what you're doing and uh, we are a family site here so I can't take that chance. Sorry, but I greatly appreciate it. Um, so let's see if we can get the pistol out here. So he does come with the basic Star Trek phaser. Can he hold it? Is a whole nother question. And oh god, so many memories coming right back from that phaser. A uh, little disappointed that the color is exactly the same, but that is very much in the vein of Mego. And uh, he is ready to kick uh, Kirk's butt. There we go. Ooh, you bend that arm, it comes right back in. This arm's a little bit stiffer. Not as, not as uh, springy as that arm is, but it's, uh, definitely, uh, it's definitely a solid figure. Now, he's uh, averaging for about $14.99 right now. He is a Target exclusive, so if you don't have a Target near you, uh, try ordering him online. Um, however, I went to the Target website today. Uh, I was looking for Frankenstein, and there is a rumor that the Wolfman is going to be in Wave 3 or maybe this kind of unannounced secret wave that's coming out. Uh, the DCPI has shown up, and... 
uh, and a few – and the UPC has also shown up for the Wolfman. So Migo, I reached out to them. They would neither confirm nor deny or send me any sort of images about the Wolfman. However, I really have no complaints with this Gorn. Now, uh, a couple of quick things here as I kind of show them off some more. Um, I have one other Gorn figure at home, and that is the 2005 Star Trek Classic Series 3 um, Art Asylum Gorn. Now, Art Asylum was uh, purchased by Diamond Select, so they're sort of been uh, incorporated into that whole company. Um, no plans yet as to re-release um, any of that classic line. I doubt it will happen. I was going to open my Gorn, the, the Art Asylum Gorn, and compare him next to this one. However, in doing my research... I've found out that the 2005 Gorn is anywhere from $64.99 unopened to $89.99 on eBay. Um, I think that Gorn's going to stay in the pack for a little bit longer. Um, I think I can have a lot of fun with this Gorn, and there was a talk of us making a Gorn and Zuvio video. If you know us here at AFJ, we are big fans of Constable Zuvio. And uh, that might still happen. Um, however, um, the other Gorn to co-star in it uh, is probably going to stay in his box. Um, as far as the middle weight goes, he doesn't have any pants on down here. Um, but he does – sorry about that. And we do have um, – I don't know. I think that might be it. Um, this is a solid figure. As I said uh, earlier, 14 points of articulation. Um, we do have uh, – a phaser, original Star Trek phaser, um, which is cool. When I was a kid, uh, I had the Kirk and Spocks, and they were um, they were blue. They were like a, a light aqua blue. Um, and then we do have the communicator piece right here. Um, the head is just amazing. Now, the original head on the original Mego Gorn was nothing more than the lizard's head from the Spider-Man wave and then the body of a Klingon. So they really cannibalized that. They, they they painted the head brown, even though the Gorn was green. I don't know why they painted they painted it a different color. Um, but Migo just nails this. This is this is what you want in Star Trek. You want a little bit of kitsch when it comes to the toys, and you want a lot of fun. And this is a little bit of both. This is a little bit of the original uh, toy line, as we have the phaser here, and the communicator piece in the belt. But it looks like the figure. I'm um, sorry. It looks like the character from the show, and you can't really do much better than that. So i got a couple of bragging things here as I wrap up. I had the privilege of actually meeting one of the Gorns, Bobby Clark, and I got his autograph on a Gorn $100 bill. So um, that is actually really, really fun. Um, and um, I went to WonderCon, and there was the Gorn. So my wife and I... Uh, said, we've got to go and say hi to the Gorn captain. So there he is signing it, Bobby Clark. This is him at Vasquez Rocks. Um, it's a fantastic picture. Um, so out of, out of all my travels and of all the people I've met, I've actually met the Gorn. Um, that's actually a lot of fun. Um, and I would also like to add that if you ever have the chance to go to Vasquez Rocks um, – Vasquez Rocks is a natural area park. It's outside of Los Angeles. I'd say L.A. time, probably about 30 to 40 minutes outside of L.A., uh, depending on the traffic. Go during the day, like on a Tuesday, and you can go out there and you can literally sit in the spot where Kirk fell and uh, was like almost wrapped up in netting or something when he was fighting the Gorn. Um, it's amazing, actually. It's an awesome park, and um, if you're not that big of a Trekkie, they filmed everything there. Army of Darkness was filmed there. Star Trek 2009 was filmed there. The exteriors were used for Vulcan, um, for the planet Vulcan. Um, if you're a Friends fan, um, the episode where Joey goes to Las Vegas and his movie gets shut down, that's Vasquez Rocks. Um, so everything has been shot there. Almost every science fiction film, uh, mostly B pictures have been shot there. A lot of TV. Um, Vasquez Rocks is always featured. Um, so it's a fun place to go and uh, definitely bring your own Gorn um, or bring a Star Trek uniform and take a picture. It's really, really fun. Um, that's it, junkies. Um, hey, shout out to Tom Whalen. How's it going? And uh, EJ Collectors. Sorry I didn't get everybody. Um, 
So please tune in to uh, AFJ's YouTube page. We've got a giant video uh, of a, a, a debacle we had with Hasbro. Should post tomorrow. And please tune into the Action Figure Junkies website. That's um, actionfigurejunkies.com. And then we have uh, our two Facebook groups, which is uh, the Junkies Facebook group. And then we also have a corporate page where we do a lot of our postings as well. So I can't say anything bad about this figure other than I wish it had the spike uh, that he tries to kill Kirk with. Other than that, maybe a boulder, but that would be a pretty big accessory. Um, this is a fantastic Mego, and it may just be my favorite Mego of all time. Um, and I had Kirk, and I had Fonzie, and this Mego, he's my favorite Star Trek, uh, almost like, like B character, maybe even C character, um, and you can't go wrong. So, thumbs up all the way, um, Manny Faces likes him too, and... Thank you for tuning in, junkies. Um, this has been a lot of fun. Um, glad it was short, um, but can't go wrong. 14 points of articulation. Target exclusive Gorn Migo. It's a fantastic figure. If you can find one, um, it actually pained me to open him, but you know what? I had a lot of fun, and uh, he's going to go on to some adventures now. This thing is really, really cool. Talk to you later. Signing out, junkies.